lead contamination, chlorine and fluoride, E. coli, fracking pollutants, toxins and pharmaceuticals. There are so many things that might be mixed in the water that flows from the faucet that turning on the tap might feel more like playing a chemical form of Russian roulette than actually getting a drink. But what if I told you that there was a free source of incredibly soft water that is, for the most part, clean? Not from a river, not from a bottle, not from a filter, and not from a reservoir. Rainwater has been an abundant gift of water for time immemorial. All you need to know is how to catch it. So what is rainwater harvesting? In order to talk about rainwater harvesting, there are two terms you need to first understand. One, impervious surface. This is a surface that is unable to absorb water. The second, runoff, the rainwater that falls onto an impervious surface. Rainwater harvesting is collecting runoff from an impervious surface and storing it away for later use. In past and modern times, that impervious surface has ranged from canyon walls to roofs. Cultures around the world and across time have taken advantage of directing runoff for their daily use. From the Jeswars of Tunisia, the architecturally stunning Jalaharas of Jodhpur in India, the Isla Urbana project is an effort to capture rainwater in Mexico City and reduce strain on their aquifers, reduce flooding, and have a dependable source of clean water. Now whatever the structure set in place is, the mechanics are largely the same. Wait for the rainstorm, redirect and capture the rainwater, and use the abundance. Harvested rainwater can be used for daily domestic supply, watering animals, growing plants, or saved for fire in emergency use. The storage methods will vary based on the intent of use, of course. Water used for fighting wildfires doesn't have to be high quality, while water for drinking certainly does. So let's talk about how to get started with harvesting rainwater. First off, you need to make sure it's legal in your area. If you happen to live in a state that has regulations against harvesting free water from the sky, maybe it's time to make the move to a different state and finally get that homestead. Then, evaluate what your goals are for rainwater harvesting and design accordingly. Do you want to harvest water to ease the strain on your water bill? Create an independent source of safe water in the case of an emergency? Water your gardens and orchards with soft, free water? Switch over to using rain water for your daily needs? Each need will probably require a different system, so the next step is to do your research. For a fantastic resource on rainwater harvesting, basics, instructions, and further information, I have a website in the description box below that will give you a lot more information. Now for all your questions about storing collected rainwater, Art Ludwig is your man. His books give detailed diagrams, instructions, and troubleshooting for building ferro-cement storage units, cisterns, and natural water storage areas. And for those looking to jump in with two feet and create their own self-sufficient supply of collected rainwater, Michael Reynolds' Earthship books are irreplaceable. His experience led diagrams, instructions, and philosophy behind the self-sufficient house designs he came up with are fantastic and inspiring for anyone looking to build their own home with their own hands. There are also quite a few off-grid YouTubers and bloggers who have built and implemented rainwater harvesting systems as their primary sources of water. Off-grid with Doug and Stacy and American Homestead and Starry Hilder all have videos detailing their daily use of these independent systems. Most of them are active enough online that you could probably contact them with specific questions. Now I've listed the systems I've used and seen in order of intensity for this next section, from weekend projects for your garden to a full-scale independent water system that you could depend on as your main water source supply. If you're seriously interested in rainwater harvesting, you'll need to do lots more research and find out which methods are best for you and your land. First one, easiest one, rain barrels. This is a weekend project that anyone could benefit from. You could buy a rain barrel or you could DIY your own. My first rain barrel when I lived in the city was a food grade 50 gallon barrel that had once held jalapeno peppers. You'll need to install a water diverter onto your downspout, connect it to the rain barrel, or three of them, and wait for a rainstorm. Your backyard garden now has rainwater even on a sunny dry day. Please bear in mind, raw rain barrel water, especially water collected from an asphalt shingle roof, is not suitable for human consumption without processing. Now if you're looking for something to store more water, tote bins used for palletized bulk transport of liquids are usually made out of food grade plastic and can hold up to 275 gallons. You can often find these on Craigslist. The next idea is a rain garden. Now you know that soggy part of your yard, the low little spot where pooled rainwater always kills all the grass? Or what about that area at the end of your downspout that gets flooded with every thunderstorm? These areas are begging to be turned into a rain garden. Enriched with water soaking organic materials and planted with wetland species, these bit of bits of paradise water themselves and give a diversity of animal species a place to call home as well. We'll put a link in the description box below for those interested in these unusual garden beds. A similar idea is a swale. Now swales go by many different names around the world, but their function is the same. Stop runoff from flowing down a hill and allow it to soak in instead. Installing swales on the slopes of your land stops erosion, allows you to multiply your available garden areas, and could even help direct rainwater into your new gardens rather than the neighbor's yard. 
Creating a pond is also another idea that admittedly takes a lot more work, but is worth it. A pond is a fantastic source of stored rainwater, loaded with beneficial organisms that keep it from going stagnant. Though the water will need to be purified for human consumption, creating and maintaining a pond on your land will ensure that you and your animals can have access to naturally stored water in times of need. A tank and a cistern. Now this is a big project, but having a place to store collected rainwater gives you the assurance of having water whenever you need it. From the five gallon water cooler to the 10,000 thousand gallon cistern half buried in the backyard. The range and scope of how to use these ancient and modern water storage units are worthy of an video or 20 in their own right. Art Ludwig's book Water Storage Tanks, Cisterns, Aquifers, and Ponds is a fantastic resource for finding the right projects for your needs. So let's talk about the benefits of rainwater harvesting. Why would you even want to do this? Whether you're living entirely off-grid or just getting started with urban homesteading, rainwater harvesting offers a host of benefits. One of the main benefits of rainwater harvesting, in my opinion, is water security. Consider the plumbing in your own home. What would happen in the event of a power outage? For those with an electric pump in their wells, the water may be totally out of reach, even if the well is only 10 feet from the door. If the plumbing depends on an electric heat source to make sure that the water flows in freezing temperatures, in a power outage, the clock is now ticking in a race between between the freezing water lines and the potentially long wait for repaired power lines. Even those with city water aren't immune, I'd wager you're actually the most vulnerable of all. That water is still moved to your home by some sort of pump somewhere. But where? It's totally out of your control to do anything if the water stops flowing. And anyone who's ever become aware of their water insecurity through experience will likely never want to find themselves in that vulnerable situation again. Directing rainwater to a cistern or storing it in a pond or even just having a rain barrel gives you a chance to ensure that you have secure access to some sort of water supply if your pipes get contaminated or run dry. Another benefit is that it's an alternative source of water. In urban environments, rainwater harvesting both reduces runoff and provides an alternative source of water that reduces stress on what is often an overtaxed, outdated sewer system. In highly developed areas, rainwater is flowing over rooftops, pavements, asphalt roads, sidewalks, everywhere where humans have cut off the rain's access to absorbent ground. All that water flows without permeating. It picks up everything on the surface. Gasoline, animal feces, garbage, oil, lawn fertilizers, road salt, and all that now polluted water gets dumped into the sewers. Out of sight, out of mind, right? Nope. Most cities still have old style combined sewers, meaning the raw sewer sewage from household use combines with the road runoff into a single pipe as it heads to the, to the water treatment plant. Whenever it rains, the massive amount of runoff overwhelms the water treatment plants, resulting in an emergency action called a combined sewer overflow, or CSO for short. In layman's terms, that means that all that excess water is dumped straight back into whatever body of water is accessible. Rivers, bays, oceans. Yes, you heard that right. Straight up human poop gasoline and accumulated toxins are flushed untreated into natural waterways when it rains every time. Consider the infamous Cuyahoga River. You may not realize that a river could catch on fire no fewer than 13 times, but once you see the photos, the reality of runoff pollution becomes a lot more visceral. Now admittedly, gathering urban rainwater for use in gardens is an itty bitty way to mitigate all that runoff. It can't do much on an individual scale, but it could do something on a massive scale. Creating urban infrastructure that slows down, captures, and uses rainwater is a a system called low impact development. Interested? There are many beautiful and useful ways to stop urban runoff. We'll give a link in the description box below where you can learn about other ideas like pervious pavement, bioretention cells, more about rain gardens, green roofs, and more. Now, however you start to harness rainwater for your land's needs and whatever the motivation you have for doing it, I hope this little video has given you ample resources to continue your research. Let us know in the comments below. How do you use rainwater and what structures have worked best on your land?